Hey out there, this is Wake Angel 2001 and um, I decided to do a quick little vlog uh, about the Sonic the Hedgehog comic put out by IDW. Um, just yesterday, the seventh issue dropped and I gotta say, this is a really good comic book. Not just because of its contents, but the way it's made. Like, the binding on it is actually quite exceptional. The cover's really thick. It has like this holographic Sonic, which probably the glare of my lighting is making the whole thing look like a flash, but this is like uh, silver here, and um, like the the feel of it, this thing has weight. It costs exactly the same as every previous issue, but this has the feel of a thin paperback book. It doesn't feel like a comic book, which you think is supposed to feel more like a magazine, but no, this feels like a thin paperback book. Um, I find that impressive. Um, but yeah, the comic has been going on for about uh, four months now, and as we all know, the first the first four issues were all launched to weekly back in April. So, so the first four um, constituted a little bit of a mini arc that got everything introduced, and then the real story proper was introduced in uh, you know the, the fifth issue, which has continued on to the sixth and the most recent seven. Uh, so I'm gonna give a little a little synopsis of what of what happened so far, just to catch it, just to just to be caught up, um, and then I'm gonna leave issue seven out because I know it just came out yesterday as of the recording of this video, and there might be some of you out there that haven't had a chance to read it, so I'm not gonna spoil at for for now. I'll um so I'll leave seven out until after I finish talking about the first six. Then I'll then I'll warn you, so anyone who wants to wait can then come come back to the video after that. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about the, the what what briefly happened in the first four issues. Um, so yeah, as we all know, the first issue begins pretty much right where Sonic Forces, the video game, leaves off. Uh, meaning making this truly a comic book that directly comes from the video games itself, which is kind of what Sega has always wanted from the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. I think um, they, there was a Although Sega always did love the success of the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book, I'm pretty sure deep down they always kind of regretted that that it spawned from a cartoon series that was only tangentially related to their original games. So this one, being completely related to the games itself, is something more that the licensors always wanted. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, so... The first four issues actually introduce us to all of Sonic's well-known friends. Uh, the first issue reintroduces Tails, the second issue reintroduces Amy, the third issue brings out Knuckles, as well as original comic villains Rough and Tumble, the Skunk Brothers, and finally issue 4 reintroduces Blaze the Cat, a beloved character that wasn't in Sonic Forces, and along with the new character Tangle the Lemur. So basically, the this these four these four issues, um, a lot of them, a lot of their story time, their panel space is taken up getting people up to speed with who the major players are going to be. So the plot itself is pretty light. All four of these issues have just a relatively simple arc of ever since we defeated Dr. Eggman, we've been rebuilding. But recently, the Badniks, which have just been randomly walking around, have suddenly begun to organize and attack population centers again. So, who's who's doing this? That that was that was basically what these first four issues were about. Um, and everything else is character introduction. I really like how they when they introduced Blaze, uh, she she came into the world saying that this she she had a vision from the Soul Emeralds that Sonic's world is going to be facing peril and that she would need to help them. You know, kind of tying in how the Chaos and Soul Emerald interact with each other, calling Sonic or Tails into whatever world is necessary whenever it's needed. You know, from the, the two Sonic Rush games. And I loved, the, I loved her reaction when Sonic said, Oh yeah, that happened about eight months ago. Dr. Eggman captured me, conquered the world, but you know, everything's better now. And I, I just love the look on Blaze's face like, like, but no, like, she says that there must be some new peril that the world's gonna face that is apparently even greater than some megalomaniacal mask guy rewriting reality with a wave of his hands. Oh yeah, great, you just set up uh, some pretty big escalation there, comic. But, uh, we, let's hope that he can actually follow through with that. Um, 
I also like uh, Tangle's powers. Um, I, as I said in the previous video I uploaded about superpowers, Tangle seems to have a, uh, a unique tail in that it's, it, it can stretch to multiple times her body length, um, is pliant enough to be used as a springboard, and it's strong enough to be used to bind robots. So that's actually a pretty interesting little ability that she has. It's like, it's like she has a Mr. Fantastic tail going on. Um, so, uh, um, at the end of the issue, um, Bla um, Blaze was paired off with Tangle, so apparently the next time we see them, they're going to be together. So, so yeah, that, that was basically the purpose of the first four issues. Just, just, the, just a very simple recap, and I can see why these were launched in a weekly schedule. If these had come out once per month, and it had taken us four months just to get this far into the comic, um, it probably would have been read as uh, as nothing more than exposition dump and trying to set, trying to do a whole bunch of setup that's not paying off to anything, and um, and like people would have felt like not enough was happening. So all this exposition stuff is that's kind of necessary to re to start a series, especially if you're adapting something and you need to explain to the audience how it's related to your adaptation and distinct from it. All that stuff was handled, and all that was given to us in one month as a really nice little tied up, um, you know, like, they, uh, everything was got out quickly because they gave us all four issues, like, like a weekly release schedule. That being said, you can kind of consider the series proper officially beginning with issues five and six. And as we all know, what happened in these two issues was the reintroduction of Dr. Eggman. Uh, yeah. So, in the fifth issue, Sonic, Sonic and the, the Chaotix are introduced um, to show how they have found Dr. Eggman and how he'd apparently been living in the village. Um, in the comic, there's actually, they actually show that uh, Dr. Eggman just appeared surrounded by those little floating cubes that are the you know, remnants of the Phantom Ruby. Like, whenever th those Phantom Ruby things would float around whenever changes happen. So, um, as we all know, the, the final boss in Sonic Forces was the, a giant Death Egg robot that, had, that was powered by the Phantom Ruby. And uh, the final leg of the battle took place in some kind of little uh, void, null space void dimension where Sonic, Classic Sonic, and the Avatar character all fought together to take it out. Um, leaving Dr. Eggman mysteriously disappearing at the end of that. So... Uh, this explains what happens to Dr. Eggman after that. Um, he's, he's apparently lost his memory and has been living as a, as, a, as a kind handyman going by the name Mr. Tinker. Where he's basically just been, um, like his, his technological genius remains, but there's no longer any malevolence to him. He has no desire to dominate or rule or damage anything. He's just been a helpful, kind old man. Um, although, uh, the name Eggman Land still came up, meaning that he might have some residual, um, buried memories. And the big concern was if this was actually just an act, that he found himself powerless and unable to escape, and, and, uh, tr and is trying to just buy time until he can be rescued by his forces again. Um, this came to a head in the following issue that tr that introduced um, Shadow and Rouge to the to this to this particular storyline, um, which uh, features a a pretty cool action sequence showing Sonic fighting Shadow. Um, you know, it's always good to see those two fight each other because you know they're so evenly matched. Um, Say so yeah, this confirms that Doctor Eggman uh, he was not lying. His Eggman Land idea is a cute little carnival for the kids in the village. With some with some uh, rides and attractions that bear superficial resemblance to some of his animal-based badniks, but again, there's there's no malevolence. Like everything checks out. It's just a cute, innocent little thing, and um, and there's every indication is that Doctor Eggman no longer remembers who he is. So it's decided that the Chaotix remain behind to watch him just in case. But they're gonna let Mister Tinker continue to live in this village peacefully. And that's where the sixth issue left off. But of course, as soon as they did that, they finally revealed who the man in the chair was. Remember how I said it would be so cute and funny if it turned out to be Agatha? Well, it turns out that it wasn't Agatha. It was Eggman. So what? So what? Why was Eggman sitting in the chair up in his fleet 
when we we confirm that Eggman is living as Mr. Tinker in the village. Robot? Clone? Phantom Ruby copy? We we didn't know at the end of that issue, and that was a drive for speculation. That okay. Now we're gonna get into spoilers. So if you haven't read the seventh issue yet, you can go ahead and um and pause this, um, read the seventh issue, and then come back later. Okay. So the seventh issue reveals that it wasn't actually Dr. Eggman sitting on the throne. It was Neo Metal Sonic. Yes, they're bringing back the Sonic Heroes trope. Say, so it turns out that off-screen, like, like, they actually tie this into the off-screen moments in the video game Sonic Forces. When you face Metal Sonic as a boss in Sonic Forces, you aren't fighting the real Metal Sonic. You're fighting a Phantom Ruby duplicate of Metal Sonic. Sonic even brings up how this is weird because you can Metal Sonic's a robot. You can build more of him, can't you? Well, I do believe that the canon version of what Metal Sonic is now is that um, is that his physical body is, for want of a better term, a remote construct. And um, the core memory of his robot body is actually truly exists in some kind of server in Dr. Eggman's base. So whenever a Metal Sonic body is destroyed, um, whatever his his um, his memories, accomplishments, everything about him is then put into a new body that is constructed as a replacement. This way, he gets the same powerful minion, um, and it learns from its past mistakes, even if. But, you know, out on the battlefield, he can still go out there and fight to the death if necessary. He doesn't have to retreat or hold back. Um, but he can't... Apparently, like, whatever egg, whatever limitations of Eggman's hardware is, uh, you can only actually make one Metal Sonic at a time. That Otherwise, you could just make an army of a thousand Metal Sonics, and, like, if one of them is a pretty decent match for Sonic... Um, how would you face a thousand? You know, it's like the revenge of coolers kind of situation. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I always imagined was the inherent limitation of Metal Sonic. It hasn't been explicitly stated, but I wouldn't be surprised if that turned out to be it. Um, so like, like that's just my speculation. So don't quote me on it. Don't go changing any wikis based on this. But it's just my observation of how it's been shown to be. Until, of course, the Phantom Ruby came out, and the Phantom Ruby literally allows you to make anything you want, so yes, an army of Metal Sonics is perfectly possible. <laughs> Just like they had an army of Shadows, an army of Chaoses, like an army of Zavox, like, yeah, of course you took over the world. All those things were a match for Sonic, and all of a sudden you have thousands of them, sure. <laughs> okay, so, um, but I digress. This time we have, apparently, while you were fighting against... Um, Infinite and the Phantom Ruby copies of everyone else, Eggman was quietly upgrading Metal Sonic one more time, restoring the powers that he had in Sonic Heroes, but carefully putting in programming blocks to make sure that he'd stay loyal. Because remember, um, the problem with, the so with his plan in Sonic Heroes was that after upgrading Metal Sonic, Metal Sonic rebelled and tried to take over the world himself. This time, uh, he's been very carefully programmed to still be loyal to Eggman. So despite the fact that he knows full well that he's more powerful than Eggman and is every bit as smart and ambitious because, you know, he had him copy Eggman's data, he still wants Eggman to rule. So um, when he emerged from his upgrade pod and found Eggman defeated, he decided what he would do is he would take over Eggman's operation he would, he would, he would reorganize the army, and he'd conquer the world again, but he would do so as Eggman. And when he found the real Eggman, he would advocate the throne to him. He would let Eggman take back the seat and become his right hand, which is his final desire. Um, now I'm, I'm elaborating on this and talking a lot, but this is all done in exchange between Sonic and, and Metal Sonic on the bridge of the of the main ship in the egg fleet and um and it and it's done in 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 progress with 
a really awesome action sequence. Like, I gotta say, this has some of the most amazing artwork I have ever seen. Um, like, I don't really, like, I don't really know if I should be uploading scans or anything because, like, I want to support this comic. And, like, this isn't a link, an, a top the fourth wall style review show. Like, if you want to see an a top the fourth wall style review that shows pictures of the of the comic as I make my my commentary and and the review on them, let me know because I'll I'll probably I'll, I'll probably do that not only for for this but for s several other Sonic comics that have, that that are worth mentioning over the years. Um, but holy crap, this has some of the most amazing artwork I've seen. It's incredibly dynamic sharp and just a little bit stylized it almost looks like um I, you know toei sonic the way that the the sonic mania animated sequences sequences have been drawn it's like they applied that sharper pointier art style but to modern sonic and um and it really allows for dynamic action flow and that it just looks incredible like like I, I had an actual wince, a real life wince, when I saw Sonic was trying to banter with Metal, only to have Metal come up and, and hit him in the in the stomach with a low kick. Like, like I hadn't seen something like that since I saw him get kicked in the stomach by Bass in the World Collide crossover. So, um, of course, it's it's basically the same writing and artistic team that worked in the Archie comics. So of course we're going to get that same level of art that we had back in in, in that time. But um, but yeah, like uh, this this was just freaking like an amazingly well drawn thing. Um, and so so now at the end of issue seven, which I'm, I'm taking it the end of issue seven to be the end of the first official arc of the story. The first official arc is, um, is, like, like the Badniks are remobilizing, and then we're finding out who's controlling the Badniks. That's the first arc. This is our first encounter with the final boss. You don't beat the final boss initially, no, the final boss has to beat you first. But, um, but yeah, like, we have, uh, we, the, the stage is set. We have Sonic and the Resistance Movement. They're not calling in the Freedom Fighters now, they're calling in the Resistance Movement. It's a video game terminology, I'll accept it. Um, Son Sonic and the Resistance Movement are now fighting Metal Sonic in command of what remains of the Egg Fleet and Eggman's robot army. So, man, this is good stuff. I gotta say, this. This this comic This is a great comic. Like it's it's only been running for four months and has only spawned seven issues, which is above average for you know four months of work for a comic book. But it's freaking awesome. Like 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 I gotta say, like, we're we're getting everything that we ever we ever loved from the old from the old Archie comic back when Flynn took it over. Um and I know some, um, some, I still really miss the, the, uh, Mobius and the beloved characters that we had over two decades to get attached to. None of you miss them more than I do. Like, that was a big part of my entire life. Not just my childhood, but, like, like, my entire life. I basically collected that comic book from the age of 10 all the way until I was 30. All the way until I was 30. I, th I think that it ended before I turned 31, although I might have been 31. But yeah, like that's over 20 years collecting this comic book. And of course, the comic book did run two years before I started collecting it, so it's a comic book that has existed, had existed, since I was eight. Um, but I gotta, I gotta tell you guys, um, the comic book that has, that has been given to us now, it is definitely a worthy successor. I do believe that this is really good stuff. If any of you out there, um, like just just out of some sense of spite, haven't been supporting this comic, like guys, it's the same team that worked on your old book. Like the same artists, the same writers, 
Uh, they, they, it's the same people, and they want to do right. They, they want to do exactly the same thing they did before. They want to do right by our favorite hero and support this license with all of their effort. And they're doing a really good job. And like, I, and if you don't want to support them based on aesthetics or or some knee jerk reaction to change, that's not fandom. That's not how fans work. That's how toxic fandom works. You don't want that, do you? So, yeah, the the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog comic, it's truly amazing. And I really think that that um, all of us Sonic fans should really be supporting this. So, like if you like if you know where your local comic book stores are or if you can or like or if you can find the play to to order them online, like like make sure that IDW gets their due. Like, don't illegally download or anything like that because, like, you know, th this is a financial institution. No matter how great the art is, if the company can't profit off their art, then they stop producing it. Um, like, like, um, remember the Archie comic? They, they had that new Cosmo. Like, apparently they put the Cosmo comic on hiatus after only six issues, which is a... Which really pisses me off because, like, I was really liking that comic and I found it to be a decent replacement for, 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 the Son for, for Sonic. And it was an, an Archie legacy book because apparently it was something continued from, from way back in their olden days. But after less, after half a year's run, they, they already, they're already thinking of ending it? That's, that's no good. Like, come, like, um... I mean, this is just Archie Comics that uh, I'm starting to wonder if Archie Comics is really in it to win it anymore, but, but like, um, you gotta support good works, because, um, like, no matter what we say, the stuff that we say and the stuff that we feel, like, no matter how impassioned we are about it, like, a, a corporation isn't gonna care about that. It's a company. Like, to a company, you speak with your wallet. If you give them money, they will give you what you like. If they give you if they give you something that you don't like, you stop giving them money and they'll stop making it. And they'll try to make something else that you hopefully will like. And if they make something you like, but you take it without giving them the money, then they'll stop making it too because you know, they want money. I mean, what can I say? It's like we live in a capitalist society and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Just um, support the comic the proper way. Um, make sure that they are that the, that they are properly receiving their due. Um, like if if you don't like what they're doing, don't support them. Like I'm not telling you to give money to people that you don't like, but if you do like them, support the comic the proper way. I know they, this is a big like um, this is a big piracy age, but. Like, this this is just a comic book, guys. This isn't some big, multi-million dollar movie or anything like that. Like, like, like this is a book. You're going to buy the book once. Um, you can, and there are legal ways to download digital copies if you don't want to have physical copies cluttering your living space. Like, I mean, I'm all about physical copies, but I know some people want, want digital copies. But there are ways to get digital copies legitimately that still support it. So, with all that being said, uh, this is Wake Angel 2001. And I'm signing off.